Waiter, boy, bring me a cappuccino. Yes, ma'am. Hold on. Don't go just yet. Now listen carefully. There are three things that you need to remember. First, I need skim milk, not full cream, and definitely not UHT. Second, it must be a double shot. And third, I need extra chocolate sprinkled on the top. <laughs> yeah, three things. Can you manage that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, round down, round down. Yeah, remember. Thảo ơi, Thảo ơi. Hi. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry I'm late again. No problem, đừng lo. My boss gave me some work in the last minutes and the traffic just terrible. Hmm. Đừng lo, đừng lo, không sao. You always seem to be on time. How can you do that? You must have a Vespa. Mm, no Vespa for me anymore, darling. That's why I asked you out today. Here. Wow! Is that what I think it is? You never told me that you learned how to drive in a car. Yeah, I only started practicing last month. That is going to take six months. How have you already get the license? Well, my human resource people took care of everything in less than a week. I had to pay, of course, but only 700 US. Mm. So um, next time when we go back to the village, I'll drive us. Hi, girl. I can see us now. Crossing down the main street, pass on the communal house and temple. Get something with the roof, the sunroof. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe a convertible. What are you driving today? Um, just a little Toyota. I borrowed it from a Belgium college who's gone home for a few months. Mm. But I've got my eye on a BMW. That would be amazing. You know, when I was studying in Australia, I could have bought a cute hash for $15,000. The same one here is more than double that price. Yeah. And the BMW is five times more than mm, that. Yes. I'm starting to think that car drivers are an oppressed minority. The government, this whole country, is so gang ăn tức ở, so gato. Mm, I'm sorry. You have to go through that, my dear. The fact that we have to pay so much in taxes and registration shows how far Vietnam is behind the developed world. It's as if Vietnamese are not good enough to own cars, as if ambition is a crime, as if success is a penalty. Already, you see, the roads are potholed and crowded, and every month, Another street in the CBD is blocked off to cars. Sure. I might as well walk. But Q, my dear, isn't driving dangerous? My husband says he never drives a car, not in Vietnam at least. Uh, I've never felt more sure of myself than when I'm rocketing along in two tons of climate-controlled comfort. <laughs> um, sure, I was nervous at first, but then I thought, it's better for me to kill someone on a yeah. Honda or bicycle than for someone to kill me. At <laughs> least, I can pay off the person's family with a couple of thousand dollars. They would probably thank me. Oh, I see what you mean. But anyway, wouldn't be like the Chinese and the hit and run. Remember that clip, the clip of the delivery van crashing into that toddler mm. in the middle of a Chinese market? How could anyone forget the driver aimed at her? I almost wept when I watched all those people stepping around her crumbled little body. Yeah, but you know, that incident confirmed an important lesson for me. Most people out there, mm -hmm. they don't value life like we do, life is cheap for them. Mm, I suppose you're right. Of course, I'm right. You know, sometimes when I think of what makes the world go round, I think of that van crashing into that toddler over and over again. Can I have a soda changda and a place of french fries? Extra crispy for both of us. Yes, ma'am.
Hey, careful with your phone. Um, keep it close to you. I wouldn't even have mind out except that I'm expecting some calls. And make sure you hook the strap of your bag on the leg of the chair like this. Okay, you know, okay, okay. you can't be too careful. <laughs> but we are in a very good restaurant queue. That doesn't mean a thing. It's not like they can search everyone who comes in. I reckon that guy over there has been sitting on his beer, mm -hmm. waiting for just the right moment to strike. Mm -hmm. The waiters know better. He would happily give up his job in exchange for one of our phones or wallets. Shameless crooks, shameless. You can be a little heartless sometime, my dear. My heart's got nothing to do with it. Think about it. If you were making one dollar a day mm -hmm. and saw this one thousand dollar phone just mm. centimeters away, mm. what would you do? Would you worry about what would happen to you if, and that's a big if, you were caught? Perhaps not. I suppose I would. Would mm. you stop to consider what your parents or teachers or back home told you about what's right or wrong? Maybe uh, for a millisecond, just before you grabbed it and ran. I'll tell you what heartless is. Heartless is tempting them by leaving your phone out like that. But we were poor not so long ago, remember? And our family and friends back home are still poor, even if it's not as bad as it was before. I remember, all right? It's because I remember what it's like to be poor that I don't trust poor people. It's because I know them so well that I hate them so much. You know what I remember? Us coming to the city for our university exam, discovering how nasty people were. I remember how our landlady evicted her when she found some student could pay higher. Even now, when I withdraw money, I remember how we are huddled together in that ATM booth at night after studying under the street lights. Yeah, everyone looked at us as if we were dirt that had blown under their doors. And you know, I don't blame them because if the queue of back then saw the queue of today, she would bash me over the head and run off with everything that I own. Well, this queue has worked too hard to let that queue get away with it. Okay, okay. I'm moving my phone. Yeah. I'm moving it away from the guys in the corner with the warm beer, away from the waiter, away from all the nasty people, and even away from the young kill who just arrived in the countryside. Let's not talk about that anymore. It's so depressing. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I remember how we used to share bánh tráng muối tôm at school. How we cut the tiny stream and try to tear the roll rice paper. So uh, we each got the same number of streams. Yeah, talk about depressing. For the price of this meal, we could have bought a month worth of rice roll. That's a good thing. Would you prefer to eat those filthy little rolls? Perhaps this sounds crazy, but sometimes I do. And sometimes I miss village life. Sure, we didn't have money, but we didn't have so much to worry about either. Maybe I expected less back then, so I wasn't so disappointed when things didn't work out. That's crazy, all right? I would rather worry about multi-million dollar hedge funds than where my next meal is coming from. Of course. Yes, sometimes I want nothing more than to dip one of those rice paper rolls in some training salt and munch away. When my little heels start school, I'm going to find someone to sell them. And I'm going to get one for him and me to share, just like 
we used to do. You're hopeless, Tao. Let me put it this way. Do you want your son to eat french fries in a restaurant or rice paper in the street? He wouldn't last long on the rice paper. He would be ốm như con mắm. And do you really think your son's school will allow people to sell rice paper at the front gate? It will surely have a canteen selling proper food like beef steak and french fries. Uh, I suppose you're right. Mm. Hey, um, tell me about your work, darling. If the rumors I've heard are true, your company's financial models are selling like fresh prawns. Uh, it's going well enough. And how are you getting on with your boss? I'm still reporting to William White. Did you see the power profile of him in Asia Business Weekly? No, but I heard about it. He sounds amazing. Mid-30s, ultra distance runner, Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. gave up his sounds career good. on Wall Street to be a trailblazer on the Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange. You told me that Will was inspirational. Uh, you know, I used to think Will was fantastic. His father was a preacher, and he has this way of speaking to you as if he knows your deepest secrets and has all the answers. And he has these dragon green eyes that fry up whenever he's talking about finance or finance. And he makes this claw with his hand when he dip into a conversation. Like he's a wizard or something. I've started doing it myself. So. Oh, well, that sounds impressive to me. Oh, uh, he's okay. We'll discover Buddhism just before he came to Vietnam. Now he called himself a aggressive ethical investor. He gave me all this book and read and tell me he's on quest to achieve higher financial goals with low yearly design. But what sort of books? Can I borrow them after you are done? You can have them. There's outsourcing your business to Buddha and karmic mergers and takeovers. It's all about packaging the Orient for our eyes. Um, at least we was trying. On the surface, he's new age and in love with Vietnam. But in reality, he looks down on us. I think they all do. What do you mean? Well, he always talking about the need for a horizontal workplace restructure, and he acts like the best friend boss. But watch out, if you bring your lunch back to your desk, wrapped in plastic. Ah, um, we've got two Austrian women like that in our office. We call them green Nazis. One day, we'll scream at one of our IT guys for dumping some paper in the waste bin instead of the recycling bin. Oh. It was like the guys had committed mass murder or stranger a make them catfish. So how are you supposed to eat out of your hands? If you want to bring food back to the office, we have to use stainless steel taffin carrier and wash them afterward like your housemate. Really? How disgusting. Yes. I can't recall the last time I washed dishes. We we'll bought a collection of the careers gamin with the company logo printed on them. He says it's how Asians have carried their food for a century and used he with pride. Just today, he left the building swinging the little nun container wearing non lang and grinning like an idiot. <laughs> but I, I think that shows are cute. Uh, Wins is all for Vietnamese language and tradition. He trying not to call us by our name anymore. He prefers to use an, chi, em, or whatever. He gets it wrong half of the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of the legal guys jokingly asked him to call him Đồng Hương, and he's actually doing it. Oh, okay, that's funny, but seems harmless enough. Maybe, but we're so difficult because uh, think that he knows Vietnamese better than we know ourselves. I don't know what you mean. Well, every time he goes on a trip, he comes back with a box of goodies for all of us in the office. 
lavender honey from Melvac, fish sauce from Phu Quoc, rice wine from Tây Nguyên. Everyone knows you can buy that stuff from the local market. Probably for half of the price he paid, but no one wants to tell him. Yeah, sure. Um, more stuff to throw in a waste bin, huh? That's for sure. And you should see his house. We've got this display cabinet in the living room in which he's collecting at least one thing from each of the 54 ethnic cities in Vietnam. He up to 23. Mm -hmm. It looks like a pile of junk to me. Uh, sounds to me like he loves Vietnam though. Probably knows more about this place than I ever will. Mm, I'm not sure about that either. When we went to Hanoi for last as for work last month, he saw roasted dog on the street. Suddenly, Vietnam wanted to make him vomit. I'm not one for dog meat either, to be honest. Fair enough, but he actually stopped and protested. Friends, not food, ba, không ăn. He chanted to the butcher with his lonely planet Vietnamese. Luckily for me, the store owner had no idea what he was saying. But then, will make me translate for him. I was so amorous. I told the butcher, I was a guy for a, a, stick, a sick tourist, and that green has gone mad because he's going in the late stage of brain cancer. Ah, oh, nice work, darling. Very um, diplomatic. You know, sometimes I look at Will and don't know whether to laugh or cry. He sits there on his sweet ball in his shorts, the underarm of his shirt, raining sweat. Will blocked the air conditioner vent in his, the office because he say he doesn't want to be, the res to be responsible for some extreme climate event that will kill millions of people in the Delta. That's bizarre, just insane. Uh, he harmless enough, though. I pretty much figure out him. to Will and the industrial little lady with the thick rim glasses. Mm -hmm. As long as he thinks he's opening up all these new opportunities and guiding me along the way, yeah. I can pretty much do whatever I want. Mm. Agree. Um, oops, I have to go. Business to attend to. Let's oh, pay okay, on the way out. It. Okay. <laughs> Allow me to pay. No, 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 no. I asked you out, remember? But I chose the restaurant. So don't fight. Let's do the Western or do. How is sound? Oh, okay, so I'll pay next time then. Um, hang on. Where's my phone? Hey!